and welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about these cheap Xiaomi thermometers that you can get for around four dollars. They have Bluetooth low energy on board and also working on a coin cell for a few months. They have this character LC display and showing the temperature and humidity data. This data is also sent to their Xiaomi app and can also be received by their um, bridges that are able to get the data out of the advertising data these um, thermometers sends out. So without even connecting to them the data is readable. And the problem with this is this data is encrypted via a bind key that will get sent to the thermometer via registering to the me app and it was finally possible to encrypt this data and to get how they create the bind key and send an own activation to it with a simple web flasher I will show. The bigger part I want to show is the complete custom firmware for these thermometers. It is possible with the activation and the web flasher to update them over the air just by connecting to it via Bluetooth without any additional hardware. Flash the custom firmware I will link in the description. It's a GitHub repo and there's a manual on how to set it up but I will show it later as well. And also it possible to go back to the stock firmware and use it as a normal thermometer again but with the custom firmware it's for once possible to create your own functions in C or C++ and also to get the advertising data without any encryption just like that and as well you can of course connect to them and read the temperature data. The way to go there was quite long for over a year now I'm looking at the microcontroller that is inside of them. It's in TLSR8251. It has 512 kilobytes of flash and 32 kilobytes of RAM. And there was some description of an SVS protocol, but it was uh, removed in the later revisions of the data sheets, so it was not really really accessible and hard to get into but after yeah over a year I finally found this flasher for the telling TLSR chips on AliExpress which is now unfortunately not available anymore and is yeah the only piece I got it was quite expensive but by reversing the communication and using another guy's works on a similar model of the microcontroller I was able to get a flasher running via a USB to UART converter. So you simply connect the SVS cable or port to the TX or output of the UART and it will flash it by emulating the SVS protocol if anything bad happens while doing an over-the-air update or flashing the wrong firmware or anything like that. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a high quality and low price PCB producer where you can upload your Gerber files and can get quickly your PCBs made in a very good quality. It is for the maker community very nice to have such a service. Back then to make PCBs was way harder with the laser printer method or anything in that direction. I yeah really like that they do support the maker community with the as low as five dollar PCBs. For comparison I have here both versions so for once the stock firmware and for once the custom firmware the custom firmware is on top and the stock firmware is on the bottom I can detect them because I 
flash the smiley every five seconds or every measurement. And if I now scan for Bluetooth low energy devices, we see for once here the stock firmware where it will have the service data. This is the advertising data where you can get the temperature without connecting to it. But if I connect to it now, it's the yeah, stock version. You can see the Bluetooth symbol is lighting up. And now we can go to a specific character data and it should be this one, I think. Yeah, temperature and humidity. And if I subscribe to that, we can also get the temperature and humidity data, but it's um, encoded into UN16. To get this data, you have to connect to the device. This is for once harder to do if you have, for example, 20 devices. This way, um, via the advertising data, you can see the temperature without connecting and can receive from a lot of different devices the data. We also now have the other one here, the custom firmware, but I don't know exactly which one it is. But to get the MAC address of the device, I made a feature into it. So if I remove the battery and plug it in again, the last three bytes of the MAC address will be shown here. So it's AA80, or I will do it again. So it's B2, AA, and 80. So I know which one I need to select here, and it is this one. And I will restart the scanning to yeah, get the new data, but this will take uh, one minute to send the first advertising data after the battery is connected. But this way you can get the MAC address of each device without the need of connecting to each separate one. While we are waiting for the advertising data to appear, I will show you the inside of one of the devices. To open it up, you have to remove two screws here. These are Torx screws and after that you can pull up the back panel and it will kind of fall apart then and will also be separate from the display. And here you can see now the for once the LCD controller and the microcontroller the TLSR82 Five, one. It's quite hard to read. On the downside we also have here the temperature and humidity sensor. It's connected together with the LCD controller via one I2C bus and gets read yeah, and written to via it. Here we also have already the connections needed to flash the device via hardware. So you have here 3.3 volt to connect, you have ground and you need the P14 PCB pad to flash it. So the P14 is the SVS pin of the TLSR chip. So right now the data should be showing and we can already see it here. So we have the service data this time from 181A. It's the environment data. The first um, four bytes are just information data of the advertising. Then we have six bytes for the MAC address, so you can use that to identify them as well. And then we have, I need to look uh, here, 00FF is the temperature data, 39 is the humidity data, and 5.8 is the battery. And then we have two bytes as well, the battery as voltage. And the last byte is simply an increase, increasing number to get new notification data or advertising data. We can also see we have um, 25.3 degrees. And this translates to um, 
two bytes and one is a zero zero and one is FF in case of um, 25.5 degrees of course that's why we have here zero zero FF so it's simply a divided um, or a multiplied value of the yeah, degrees you can just divide it by 10 and you will get the correct values we can also connect to the device and we should then also see the Bluetooth icon showing after a few seconds there we have it and we can also see the temperature and humidity data in clear text via the characters and also the battery in clear text as the percentage value this is just to have it available but the advertising method is way better to use as we don't have to connect to it of course so we now see the values changed a bit to flash a new firmware to the device you can use a smartphone or a PC with Bluetooth low energy capabilities and a Chrome browser or any other web Bluetooth compatible device. I will link my repository in the description. There are for once the files and also the pre-compiled custom firmware and the source code of the custom firmware. So you can even build your own version of it. I wrote a description on how to flash it and also on how to activate it. I will show it now. So I need to download the current firmware. I will simply click on download and will re-download it as it is a newer version. Then we need to go onto the telling flasher and here it's a bit small but it's possible so I will simply click on connect and I know that this one is the stock firmware I will select it and click on connect now we need to wait till the connection is done here and we now can see it is connected which is what we want and it detected a me thermometer we can now, or we need to do the activation here on top. This can um, also be used, as I said, to just get the me bind key to use the stock firmware as an advertising, advertising um, device. So I will now click on do activation and it will show here that it does the activation and had successfully done and log in. And we now have here the bind key and the token. The token is used to log into the device, for example, to authorize, authorize date to make the over the air update. The bind key is used to decrypt the advertising data if we want to. But I will now show how to flash the firmware. So I need to select the firmware and I will do it that way and this is the newest downloaded firmware here it has opened the file and shows that it is 60 kilobyte in size you need to be very um, precise and do not select a wrong file at, as it will just flash it to the device and it can brick it I now need to click on start flashing there will be a status update here and you see the update is quite fast and yeah we will just wait till it's done after the firmware is done the device will simply reboot and the uh, website will disconnect from it as it yeah needs to because it reboots that is no problem we then can simply reload the size site and do a connection again we now see the update is done, the device reboots and it says 772D and the first one I missed. But we now should see a new device here. We have it here. It is 17772D, it's not so important. And after one minute we also will have the advertising data. So 
This is how you do a firmware update. To go back to the stock firmware, you simply select the stock firmware and flash that one to the device. It can be used just like that. In general, this is all I have to say. And this, is what, this was quite a journey as the encryption took way longer to decode and to analyze. But I learned a lot and I'm very happy that it works now. Please uh, give a thumbs up if you like it as well. By the way, you can support my channel via the PayPal link in the repo. This will help a lot to make more such of these projects. I hope you like this project. If so, please subscribe. If you find any other device that uses a TLSR or a Telink microcontroller, this can most likely be hacked as well as the SDK that is available for it is quite open and quite wide in the chipset. Also the over the air update method can be used then for the other device if the characteristics is available from the stock over the air update method. I think that's all. Wish you a great day and bye.